This past week, I uploaded my first kind of artistic-ish trip report. I posted a few videos on bike packing and bike camping trips that I've done, but this is the first one that I've actually put like a lot of kind of thought and effort into. And I wanted to make a video about my process and what I was thinking when I was making this, not because I think this is a really good short film or anything, but rather I really hope to inspire whoever's watching this to create meaningful content using the tools that you have. When I started making videos, I thought that I needed really, really fancy equipment in order to be at all successful or to create really beautiful or meaningful projects or meaningful videos. But as I have gained more experience, I have realized that you can do anything with the tools that you probably already have, meaning your phone. In order to make meaningful or even beautiful content, you don't need fancy equipment. You don't even need a lot of technical or specialized knowledge of editing. So this video walks through how I made that film from start to finish. So I wanna start with process. Let me begin by acknowledging that I know I am not a very good filmmaker. This is objectively true. I have no background in filmmaking. I have a degree in English, which taught me no practical skills whatsoever. And I don't really have any knowledge of how to compose a shot, how to do fancy things in post in like, you know, the editing program and stuff afterwards. I have literally learned everything I know about making YouTube videos from watching YouTube videos on making YouTube videos. So I've been at this YouTube thing for about two years now. And something that I think a lot about is the art of a video, what it's going to look like before I even turn the camera on. And because I knew that I wanted to make some kind of artistic -y film out of the footage I took on this trip, I had a couple of concepts in mind before I even started filming. So the first thing that I started to think about was how to capture the feeling of being out in the woods on your bike. And because it's such a particular feeling, and I think there are a lot of creators out there who are outdoor enthusiasts or have channels about being outdoors who have you know, all kinds of like really advanced camera equipment and do such an amazing job with drones and like all, you know, all kinds of like fancy things that I have absolutely no idea how to use. But I really wanted to capture kind of the rawness of being exhausted riding through the mountains on a loaded bike what it feels like to kind of trudge through the dirt, how vulnerable it can be at times when you oscillate between feeling really strong and really weak and really good and really bad on your bike. How do you capture the relief of arriving to a campsite after you've been riding all day and you're completely exhausted? How do you capture that exuberance and that exhaustion? I don't know how well I did it, but that was some of, that was kind of the concept that I had in mind. And lastly, I wanted to meld my love of literature and my love of cycling, because I think both are two different forms of expression. One is a form of physical expression, being cycling, and the other is a form of intellectual expression. And they don't feel at first glance like they belong together, but I think that there are ways that they do and that you can intertwine the two. And if you've watched the film, you'll, you know that it ends with a brief excerpt of Walt Whitman's Leaves of Grass, which was a poem, uh, which is an epic poem that was written in the 19th century. And it is about many different things, but one of them is the experience of being in nature. And I thought it was really appropriate for this particular kind of cycling film. So the next part of this video, I want to talk about location. So my friends and I decided to do this route called the Choga River Ramble. It's in South Carolina, and it's about a three-ish hour drive from Atlanta. 
it's a route that's actually on bikepacking.com and I'll link it in the description below if you want to check it out. The route itself is supposed to be a three day, two night, 80 mile jaunt through these really beautiful waterfall laden areas of South Carolina. And it's rated, I think a five out of 10 on, on their difficulty scale, <laughs> y'all. It was like a six or a seven. It was actually really hard. It's really hard because there's a lot of unmaintained single track and a lot of hike -a bikes It was definitely not for beginners. Overall, we really enjoyed it and enjoy enjoyed the experience of it, but it was, it was hard as hell. It was super hard. So in terms of filming, while we were on this trip, I decided not to bring my GoPro or the camera that I'm filming on now, which is a Sony a6400. I decided just to bring my iPhone and I did that for a couple of reasons. First, the weight, a bigger camera is a pain in the butt to carry around. And I wanted to just enjoy this trip and not think about getting a really good shot or anything like that. I didn't bring a GoPro because even though it's super compact, it's really portable and it's really easy to kind of just whip out and like take some footage, it's notoriously buggy and shuts off, it overheats, it turns on sometimes without me actually turning it on. I have a GoPro 10 and I think that this is an issue in all of the GoPros, but my GoPro in particular is just really unreliable and I didn't want to be out on a bikepacking trip and having to fiddle with a GoPro while I'm act we actually have like 10 more miles to go and I'm exhausted I have to like get out my GoPro I just didn't want to have to deal with it now just having a phone was super easy and so all I did was I had my phone in my top two bag or I put it in my rear pocket in my jersey and I just took it out whenever I wanted to film something. It was super random every, you know, whenever something looked beautiful, I was like, oh, I'm gonna just whip out my phone and take a quick video. And I knew that even though I wasn't gonna have kind of a coherent narrative, I wasn't vlogging, I wasn't narrating or anything like that, I knew I wanted to take all of these clips and kind of mash them together in some kind of way at the end of the day and make something out of it. If you like watching vlogs on YouTube, you're probably familiar with Casey Neistat. And in a talk he did a few years ago, he famously said that the creation of a good YouTube video is all in the edit. It's all about what you do after you turn the camera off. And so for this, I decided to trust myself to be able to mash all of this together and to create some kind of coherent narrative out of it. So once we got back from this trip, I loaded it all up into a program called DaVinci Resolve. I use DaVinci Resolve to make all of my videos. However, there are a number of different programs that you can use. DaVinci Resolve just happens to be free and it's a professional editing software that has something of a learning curve but is ultimately not that difficult to use. It took me a, like a little while to learn it. iMovie, if you have a Mac, is another good alternative. But if neither of those work for you, there are a lot of YouTube videos and suggestions out there about editing software that you can use. I'm not gonna suggest anything to you because I have no, I have no authority whatsoever <laughs> to, <laughs> to suggest an editing program to you. I like things that are free, and so I use DaVinci Resolve. So I have DaVinci Resolve in front of me and I wanna show you guys kind of generally, roughly, what the timeline in the video editor looks like. And so when I open it, you have all of these clips right here. And I went and looked through every single one of them, found moments that I thought were either really beautiful or kind of interesting visually. And I just like put them in the timeline with no real like, no real rhyme or reason why. Maybe a couple of them like seems like they would fit better together than others. Then I kind of mulled on it for a little while. Then I wrote up a little script that I recorded independently that I wanted to put over all of the clips that I put together. I felt really inspired by a couple of YouTubers who do this style of video. Mikey Fixed is one of those people. And there are a couple of videos that were put out by Dos Noventa that is a fixed gear, maybe single speed, I think they're fixed gear, bike manufacturer in Barcelona. And they put out like a couple of different videos 
they're more like advertisements for their brands, but I like find them really aesthetically pleasing. And I found that really inspiring. And so what I wanted to do here was have a voiceover of me reading this poem by Walt Whitman. <laughs> Walt, Walt Whitman. <laughs> I don't know why I said it like that. I wanted to have... <laughs> Sorry, I'm sorry. Um, so I wanted to have this uh, poem by Walt Whitman with this little script that I wrote. And underneath that, I wanted to have like different kinds of sounds that elicited different kinds of emotions as you were watching this. And on this particular trip around the woods and rivers of South Carolina, I remembered a few stanzas of Walt Whitman's Leaves of Grass. I studied Whitman in grad school, and Leaves of Grass is one of those epic poems that I keep coming back to again and again and again in different periods of my life. I don't know how successful this was in the long run, but that was kind of my thought process as I was editing this. Now, I will say that this took me a really long time. Actually, as I am filming this, this this film still isn't done. You can see in my editor, like I have um, all of this is just empty. They're just like clips put together. There's no sound underneath this except my like little voiceover. So I'm still working on it at the time of making this video on how I made this film. So this is roughly how I have thought about making this film, how I kind of went about editing it, how I went about thinking more critically about visuals and how to edit things together. I don't want to go too deep into how I made this technically with DaVinci Resolve because to be perfectly honest, I am not a stellar video creator. I'm no expert in film editing. And I think that there are a lot better people out there to explain how to use this program and how to make films. The purpose of this video for me was to inspire you guys rather than kind of walk you through that really technical process instead of giving you instead a kind of larger overview. So I do hope that this was useful. And if you do have questions, please let me know in the comments below. I'm happy to talk more in depth about process or about specific questions that you have. Now, if you guys want to see more films like this, more about like making cycling YouTube content or even more kind of artistic-y films, short films that I post on my channel, please let me know in the comments below. I love hearing from you guys. I love knowing what you wanna see, what is working, what's not working. It would be great to get some feedback on what this is, <laughs> what this is like for you guys watching. All right, y'all, that is, all I have for you today. And I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was productive in, in some capacity. And I will see you next week.